Hey guys, welcome back to Ranger Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew, and because you are digging the 10 military survival skills in 10 minute videos, I've got another one for you today. 10 more military survival skills in 10 minutes. Stand by. All right, jumpers hit it. Now the jump master knife or the military pilot survival knife or egress knife tends to get a bad rap, especially older models like this 499 Ontario. But it actually is a good survival tool to have as part of an emergency kit, which is why it's still issued to pilots and why a newer version is actually issued to jump masters for mass tactical jump operations. But with our knife, we can use the back of the knife with the saw teeth to saw limbs. We can use the butt end of the knife to hammer in nails or hammer stakes into the ground, whatever we need to. We can also modify the knife with a file and a sharpening kit to remove the secondary bevel on the knife's blade and make it sharp, cutting through paper. We can also take the knife because it has two holes in the guard and with parachute cord lash it to a pole to create a simple spear for hunting or defense in a survival situation out in the wild. Now the military machete and sheath a great tool to have, especially in a swamp environment or a jungle environment, to take down large sections of material easily and then process those materials for shelter craft or for fire craft or making traps, whatever we need it to. But the military machete, like most military survival tools, is going to be made out of high carbon steel, 1095 steel. And what this means is that the machete, with the right techniques and tools and implements, is also a fire starting device. We can take out char material or fine tinder and then find a piece of shirt or a hard rock and then using the back of the machete, just like we would with a high carbon steel knife, we can strike the back of the machete to produce sparks, get those sparks to land on our highly flammable tinder like char cloth. Once it catches that spark, we can just apply that tinder to our tinder bundle, blow it into flame and we have fire. Another military survival item or survival tool is that commando saw. And one of the best is going to be from the United States Marine Corps survival kit. Now this is from an older model of a 91 generation. But with those wires and then the toggles that they have already, we can attach the wire in between those toggles, secure them in place as much as we need to, and then we can grab paracord or just simply make toggles off the landscape from twigs and use the commando saw to cut down material. We can also fashion a bow saw frame with a simple sapling, attach the wire saw again with the toggles in place, and then use that bow saw to saw through material. And another fun fact of the commando saw, especially the USMC version here, is that this wire can actually cut through metal. We can take that bow saw with the wire attached and then cut through a simple piece of metal easily enough with the wire saw. Good to go. Camouflage and concealment can be important in a survival situation, especially in an evasion situation. And we always improvise with what we have. So with a little bit of paracord and our survival knife, we can harvest a small sapling and create what I like to call a Yeti. All we do is gather that sapling, fold it on itself, and secure the two ends together with a piece of 550 cord. And then we gut the rest of our 550 cord. Taking that gut, we construct a net around that loop or that sapling to give us a lattice work to work with. And then we just gather vegetation from the area and string it through our lattice work, creating that Yeti. And then all we have to do after that is simply take the rest of our 550 cord, the sheath, and create a simple lanyard or a sling by connecting the top and bottom of our Yeti together with that 550 cord, throw it over our back, and we have a little bit of improvised camouflage that we can use to hide or hide our gear. Easy enough. Another way to improvise a compass for finding cardinal directions and land navigating in a survival scenario is something called a pocket navigator. It's a very simple take off of a shadow tip method. All we do is gather a board, some sort of gnomon, or in this case a nail, and then we have a pen or a sharpie. We stick the nail through the board at one end and then pointing the board so the nail shadow cast by the sun starts at one side of the board. We mark that point, leaving the pocket navigator in place. We simply mark the shadow tip every hour or so as the sun moves through the sky. 
the tip of the shadow is going to create an arc on the board. We connect all those lines for that arc and the shortest distance between the arc and the nail itself is going to give us our north-south line. And we can check that with our compass to make sure we're right if we're doing this for practice. And that's how you get cardinal directions using a pocket navigator modification to the shadow tip method. Improvisation is the key to survival. We've got to improvise with what we have, especially if we're getting low on fire starting tools and tinder and this is our last fire using those materials we got to recreate fire starting devices or tinder in this case to get a fire going at our next camp especially for survival it'll make life a lot easier one thing we can do is create military char cloth we just grab our canteen cup our military cravat from our medical kit put the cravat in the bottom of our cup grab a big rock and put it on top of the cravat inside of our military canteen cup. Once we get that fire going nice and hot, we place that canteen cup upside down in the fire so the rock is supporting the cravat at the bottom of our canteen cup, which is now on top. We let that fire char that material. You can't overchar anything, so let it go for a while. Once the fire cools down, we remove the cup. Once it's cool to the touch, we can grab it, turn it over, and we've got char that we can test and use for our next fire. Water is incredibly important in any survival situation and this time instead of us going to the water, the water has come to us and we're going to take advantage of it. Using our military poncho, we can construct a simple poncho rain catch to get hydrated. We take out our military poncho and string the four corners up between some trees in a large enough space to get our poncho spread out enough to collect rainwater. Turn the poncho hood inside out so it is closest to the ground and the water that drops into our poncho is going to collect in our hood. We can do up the hood just a little bit by closing the aperture of the face to get more water into the hood and then simply pull up on the back of the hood to pour that water into our canteen cup. Highly recommend boiling water like this if it touches anything, especially a dirty poncho. But this water is easily collected Put in our canteen we can take it to a fire and boil it and drink it on demand food preservation is an important survival skill to understand especially for long-term survival one thing we can do to preserve meat is by making a simple smoker and smoking the meat over a fire for an extended period of time now we just make a simple tripod and then we can grab our military poncho and take our poncho wrap it around our tripod to create an enclosed space and then taking our meat put our meat on sticks or some sort of shelf inside of our smoker about halfway up we take our entire smoker place it over the fire we want to use rotted wood or older dried out wood spaced apart in our fire pit to create a nice smoke we smoke that meat for six to eight hours and that meat will last approximately 24 hours the longer we smoke the longer that meat will last. But this is how you preserve meat for future meals and long-term survival. Signaling is an important military survival skill. We're gonna have a lot of signals to communicate over time and space, especially radios, but we also have individual signaling kits, things like pyrotechnics, flares, smoke grenades, to things such as panels, and then chem lights, flashlights, and even whistles. But we need to be able to recreate or improvise those signals from the landscape around us in a survival situation. And one of the ways we can do that is with something called a smoke generator. We simply move out into an open area to construct our signal, make a platform out of dead dry wood, stack up wood around it to create a log cabin structure, and then build a fire inside. We ignite that fire inside and then gathering green leafy material, we take those green vegetation and put it over our fire, that fire is going to eat that green vegetation and as it burns, we'll elicit a bright white plume of smoke to signal aircraft or search and rescue. Sometimes old school is the best school and an old school improvised way for getting a fire going is using that old L-shaped flashlight that's been around for decades. We can take that L-shaped flashlight and in the bottom compartment, where typically you store your different lenses for signaling. You can place lead wires, any type of lead wire should be good, alligator clips, and then some fine steel wool to act as tinder. 
We disassemble the flashlight and attach our lead wires to the leads inside of the flashlight housing compartment. And then take out our tinder or that steel wool, place it inside our tinder bundle, and we're ready to go. Turn on the flashlight, connect the lead wires with our steel wool, ignite that steel wool, and then turn off our flashlight, remove the flashlight and the lead wires, and simply blow that tinder bundle into flame with the steel wool now ignited and we've got a fire going. Too easy. All right, guys, that was another 10 military survival skills in 10 minutes. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment in the comment section. I always appreciate your feedback. I want to thank you guys for everything you do for me, for this channel, for your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.